This section is going to be talking about probability and genetics. We're going to first look at a review of what probability is, and then we're going to look on how that affects genetics and how we use that in determining the traits of our offspring. So first off, looking at probability, probability is the likelihood that an event is going to occur. For example, if I flip a coin, what's the likelihood that's going to land heads? Well, you can figure that out by counting how many times it can land heads, which is one, and you either can land heads or tails. There's only one way a coin can land heads. And you're going to divide that by the total number of outcomes, which is two. It could either be heads or tails. It can't be anything else. So the probability is going to be one divided by two, or one half. Uh, that is the same thing as 0 0.5 or 50%. It does not matter which way you write those, uh, whichever one you're more comfortable with. If you like fractions, go with fractions. If you like decimals, go with decimals. If you like percents, go with percents. Uh, whatever you are more comfortable with, please use. Uh, another example would be <coughs> rolling, <coughs> excuse me, rolling a five on a six-sided dice. So here, how many different ways can you roll a five? You can only roll a one way. Uh, how many different outcomes can you roll with your dice? You can roll six. That's a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So your probability is one six. That's the same thing as 0 0.16 repetend or 16.6 repetend percent. Again, does not matter which way you decide to uh, write that. In this case, it's probably easier just to leave it as one six. Uh, the next thing you need to know about probability is there are two types of probability. There are theoretical probability and there's experimental probability. Uh, theoretical probability is calculated by using math theory, which we just did. Experimental is calculated by actually doing trials. So we took that example of rolling a dice. I did some math to figure out the probability. If I were to actually sit here and roll dice, to figure out the probability that would be experimental. So we did theoretical. Actually doing an experiment is going to be doing experimental. And what did Mendel use? Well, Mendel did, and he actually crossed his plea plants. He actually didn't just sit there and think about it. He actually physically crossed these pea plants and bred them. So he performed an experiment, and therefore he used experimental probability. Um, one way to help us with uh, crossing um, generations of whatever we're crossing um, is Punnett squares. Punnett squares will help with the theoretical um, approach. It's not actually going to be us crossing and breeding animals or plants or other living things. Uh, we are just going to do it theoretically, and therefore we're going to use Punnett squares to do so. They're actually quite fun to do, and they're pretty simple to understand. Um, basically, it's going to simulate the cross with the genetic um, alleles, and we're going to see which uh, offspring look like what based on the Punnett squares. Before we get into Punnett squares, though, we need to know some terminology, and that is heterozygous versus homozygous. Heterozygous, uh, you'll note that prefix hetero, and homozygous has this prefix homo. Hetero means different, homo means the same. So heterozygous, you're going to have two different alleles. For example, if we're still talking about tall versus short, those are the ones with the capital T, lowercase t. Homozygous are going to be your purebreds. These are going to be um, two of the same alleles for the trait. So this would be your capital T, capital T, or your lowercase, lowercase t. Um, another name for homozygous, like I mentioned, is purebred. Another name for heterozygous is going to be hybrid. Um, hybrid would be a combination of those alleles. Um, Mendel's going to use the term hybrid to describe heterozygous bee plants, like I just said. He's going to use purebred to describe homozygous, but that was already covered. So, how to make a Punnett square. There you go. We're going to cross a male, a heterozygous male with a heterozygous female here. Uh, I'm going to move up here so you can see a little better. Um, let's get the pointer up. Let's do... There we go. Um, so we're going to cross a heterozygous male with a homozygous female. Um, 
Our header is, I guess, female. Now, I, I didn't mention what trait we're going to use, but we're going to use tall versus short. And due to the fact that they are both heterozygous, I know that they are both going to be one capital and one lowercase, because that's what a hybrid is, or that's what a heterozygous is. So we're going to put one parent on top. This We're going to get T here, and we're going to get the lowercase t here. We'll put one parent on the side, capital T here, and a lowercase t here. And we're just going to simply fill in the boxes with our offspring. So here's our parent one, here's our parent two. Our first offspring right here, we just fill in our boxes. This capital T is going to drop down. And this capital T is going to go over, and that's going to be our first offspring. Second one's over here. Capital T is going to come over. This one's going to drop down. Keeping in mind, I always write capitals first. And there's that one over here. Same thing. Capital T drops down, lowercase slides over, and this one here gets our two lowercase. You'll note this here is an example of our F2 generation in Mendel's experiments. We have one-fourth of our offspring. This guy right here is going to be purebred tall. We have two-fourths or one-half of our offspring, which is going to be hybrid tall, and we have one-fourth of our offspring that's going to be purebred short. And I can tell that all just from these alleles in that quick little um, Punnett square. Uh, so next we want to cover two more key terms. That's genotype and phenotype. Uh, genotype deals with your genes. That is going to be your genetic makeup or your allele combinations. So those are your letter combinations. So your genotype refers to your allele combinations or your letters. Phenotype starts with a pheno, um, but the pH you could think of as physical. So phenotype physical. Uh, phenotype is going to re um, refer to your physical appearance or your visible trait. So that would be either tall or short in this case. So your genes tell you this, but you look like this. So if my genes tell me that I'm purebred tall, then I have two capital T alleles, and therefore my phenotype would be tall. Um, not necessarily um, does your genes dictate your phenotype, because your phenotype is pretty easy to change um, your outward appearance. For example, I could just dye my hair, and even though I have the genetic makeup for brown hair, I could just dye it purple or something, and then I'd have purple hair as my phenotype. So my physical appearance is pretty easy to change. Uh, code dominance is this um, occurrence in certain uh, different traits where uh, neither allele are really dominant or recessive. Um, so if you have something that is heterozygous um, as your genotype, meaning you have both, then your phenotype is also going to have both. You see this a lot in um, multicolored cats. Uh, they'll have different uh, alleles for the um, for their coat, their uh, color. And if they have a couple colors in there, that's because it's codominant. They have uh, both alleles. It's just that they're both um, going to show. Um, you can review on page 89 with that to go a little more in depth.